subject I'm talking about is uh, I really get excited. And I think today, in all honesty, that the greatest thing to prove that LNG White was a prophet inspired by God is a health message. And I'll tell you why. A young man in our church came to me and said, oh, Mrs. White copied all her things. And I want to tell you something. If you could go back 139 years ago and copy everything that was correct, 100%, 140 years later, to be vindicated by science, you'd be more than a genius. That'd be a miracle of God. They used to use the heavy metals, as you know, and the arsenic and the mercury. They used to bleed people to death, you know, and they, all these crazy treatments. But if I would practice medicine 50 years ago, Things, you could take me to court today and sue me and you'd win if you now practice. Medicine keeps expanding in the nineties. But so how could a, a third grade person with a third grade education write on health? So she picked out some of these things weren't even being taught then, some of them were. She could pick out not fifty percent, but a hundred percent. There is I challenged all my audience, you give me one thing written on health from the spirit of prophecy that you can say today is scientifically absolutely false. No, one, no one's taken me up and proven me wrong on that. I don't think you can, because it's solid. I'm gonna tell you some experience that I had with other doctors and specialists. I want you as preachers to be proud of our message. Amen. You're standing on solid ground. I'm proud to be a son of You know, we've got some smart guys in this church. Some of you are very smart. I admire you, I, I have respect for the ministry. But we got some scholars, and I tell you, our, our, our message is solid and the word of God. Amen. But our health message is really solid. And I'm not ashamed to talk to any doctor. Now I'll tell you something. Over here, I'm nobody. But I go over to Europe, you know, just coming from the States, you're a symbol. And they put you on radio, and they put you on television, and all that stuff, you know. And I, I got invited to the medical school there. Well, you know, first I was scared, but then all the Lord's in this, you know. Who, who is mama to talk to medical students? So I had this room full of medical students and uh, professors, and I talked about protein, okay, coming from a plant source point of view. They had one or two questions, I forget what they were. At the end of that, I could answer them. They didn't have any more questions. They couldn't refute what I said. Mm -hmm. Our message, I want you to know, is solid. It's not way off to the left or something probably. So I get excited, and I'll try and really talk slower. I said talk louder. If you don't hear me, raise your hand. If you don't fall asleep, raise your hand. And I'll try and talk louder here. So I like the fact that we have science to vindicate our health message. And uh, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. Now, to illustrate, uh, uh, first of all, I'll talk a little bit about diabetes. Um, one time I was at a lecture, and a guy talked a whole lecture about diabetes. I thought, I'm not diabetic. I'm not interested in that subject. So I'm not going to give this whole lecture on diabetes. I'll just tell you a little bit to show an illustration. Uh, I had a patient come in, and he had a real pretty wife. I don't know why I remember that. I remember the pretty girl. <laughs> yeah, a real pretty wife. And I, I think she kind of threatened him, like, you don't get straightened out, I'm not leaving you. Because, so he came my office serious. He wanted to change, and you know, his sugar's out of control, and he's an overweight, and all this stuff. So I gave him these two books to read, one on <coughs> China study, yeah. again, the Red Dad, and oh, again, yes. Dr. Neil Bernard's program for reversing diabetes. There's another one, the 30-day diabetes miracle. Now he, he read those all the way through, okay? Now here's what happened to him. When he came in, <laughs> His cholesterol was 283. Now your cholesterol should be 150 or below. Now I'll give you a little tip. If your cholesterol is below 150 and the bad cholesterol, the LDL, is below 80, they've never had a heart attack. So I used to have a cholesterol of about 240, 250. I used to have triglycerides. I was running five miles a day. I had a uh, triglycerides 300 to something, 50. But I had both my cholesterol below 150 and my HDL below 80 now, and I did that with no medicine at this time. Okay, so it is possible. So anyway, back to, back to this guy. So he comes in, his cholesterol is 283, which is terrible, right? His triglycerides, which should be at 150, are 1,669. Got it? Now, when you come into my office and I draw your blood, I put it in a centrifuge, spin it on those cells in the serum. You take that off, and that's where you run the blood test on the serum, okay? We do all these blood tests. Well, when you do that, your serum looks like uh, ginger ale, but it's kind of a... Uh, uh, like tannish brown color, okay? Now his, when we spun his blood down, you know what his serum was? It was solid white. <laughs> you know why it's solid white? It's full of fat. We call them chylomicrons, microscopic my, uh, 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 part of the fat, and you spin it down, it's white. And when we see it in the office, we say, woo, you know, woo, he's got a plug up his arteries, he's gonna have a heart attack or stroke. So that's what it was. 
and his glucose is way up 379. Now, that was in December 2008. January, February, March, his cholesterol went from 283 down to 134, and his triglycerides went from 1,669 down to 167. Mm. Mm. Ten times. The sugar came down, what? Ten times less. Ten times. So I'm telling you, I'm a believer as a doctor. That's shocking to a doctor. I see that. I've had patients, uh, it's no longer in existence, you know, over in Oklahoma, they have the lifestyles of America. It was too expensive, it was good, but it was good for the rich people because that's their one could afford to go there. But it was a wonderful program. We got somehow to invent something for the poor. But anyway, I sent patients over there on insulin, come back to my office, off their insulin and normal sugar. On diet, I get an exercise. It's amazing. So what I'm telling you, this stuff that you and I have been reading all these years, and this health thing is correct. It's good stuff. Okay, now, I use that for illustration. Now, uh, uh, let me talk about illustration number two. How many of you read the China study? Uh, okay, thing good. Huh? So I'm not the whole thing, but Yeah. You know, in Oklahoma, I keep giving a little hint to conference office. Oklahoma, conference bought that and gave it to every minister and every school teacher in Oklahoma to read that. <laughs> it's interesting. So I tell you, if you ever read it, you need to read it from cover to cover. Yeah. A guy sent that to me. He said, Mullins, read this from cover to cover. You know why? It mentions seven day Adventists in there, too. People are watching us. Yeah. They're watching what we're doing. Well, I want to tell you about Campbell. This book, and, and, and so we review for some of you. Now, remember, my talk wasn't made for ministers. My talk was made for the lay people, right? So forgive me if I'm telling this stuff you already know. Okay. Now, it says the most comprehensive study of nutrition ever conducted. It's true. Now, when I China study, the title kind of turns me off because I see this stuff made in China. My blood pressure goes up. I'm just teal with these politicians what they've done to us. But anyway, don't let that bother you because they had a study going over the whole country of China. They got all kinds of different cultures and they got high altitudes and low altitudes. And it's a good thing to study. So that's what they've done the study for over 40 years now. And the data in here is fantastic. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. For those that haven't heard it, those that have heard it, it'll be a review for you, okay? But I get excited for the doctor because I'm a believer in the spirit of prophecy. And when you can vindicate the spirit of prophecy with the science, I really am excited, okay? So here's what Tobin Campbell says. He's uh, uh, been in the system of nutrition for 40 years. He's did research for 27 years, and he's co-authored 350 scientific articles. Mm -hmm. So he's a biggie. He's well-respected in the world. He's not just a, a little bit, you know. He mentioned Neil Mullins outside of, of, the, of the bowl. Nobody knows me, you know. But this guy is a big scientist and, and deserves it. So he's in charge of this big study. Now, he said this. A good diet is the most powerful weapon we have against disease and sickness. Can you believe that? Now, let me read you a little statement here. 127, uh, Council of Diet Foods, 127. Indulgence of appetite is the greatest cause of physical and mental debility. <coughs> Indulgence of appetite uh, is the greatest cause of physical and mental debility. <coughs> um, something else here. The disease and suffering that everywhere prevail are largely due to the errors in regard to diet. Now let me tell you about Campbell. Campbell was a scientist, because I'll try it and, and hold your attention a bit and I'll let you go a little early because I won't hold you too long. It's bad time to have to do. But I get excited about this. Now Campbell is a nun Adams, of course. He's a nun said Adams. And he's a professor and he's a big researcher and he's teaching medical students. So he's a big shot, okay? And he's going to go over to the Philippines because those poor kids in the Philippines are having cancer of the liver bad. And he's going to go help them, and he figures a lot of his knowledge will go there and get them a better source of protein. Animal protein will help those kids and decrease cancer of the liver. So he goes over to the Philippines, and he does research. And what does he find shocking to himself? That the kids who have the most liver cancer are the kids that are eating the most meat. That's what he's going to do. He's going to help them. So his, his mind is spinning. And he, he does research on all this, several kinds of studies. Now, he does a study in China. In the whole country of China, there's a very various climate and cultures. And he found, listen to this, more than 8,000 statistically associations between various dietary factors and disease. Not 80, not 800, 8,000 relationships. Now, 
I, I won't go back. Excuse me, I'm preaching to the choir. I know that. But how could a third grade person, a third grade education, write material that is one in, in 2012 is right up to date? Huh? How do you write that? And she writes about diet, 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 and here, here's this guy's giving the research, telling the same thing, okay? He has anything to do with Adventists. He didn't know about her at that time. So, so he writes this, uh, and he says this, people who ate the most animal-based foods got the most chronic disease. Now that impressed me as a doctor when I read that. He goes on to say, I could not and did not rest in the findings of our animal studies and the massive human, human studies in China, however impressive they may have been. I sought out the findings of other researchers and clinicians. The findings of these individuals have proved to be some of the most exciting findings of the past 50 years. Isn't this interesting? So he said, these findings show that heart disease, diabetes, obesity can be reversed by a healthy diet. Other researchers show that various cancers, autoimmune disease, bone health, kidney health, vision and brain convincing, are convincingly influenced by diet. Most importantly, the diet that has time and again shown to reverse and prevent these diseases is the same whole foods, listen to this, plant-based diet. Diet? That I have found to promote optimal health in the laboratory research in the China study. The findings are consistent. As you know, I've saved heard a thousand times. In grains, fruits, vegetables, I have found all the nutrients we need for nutrition. You, you, you. So, you know, all this stuff is just summarized in, in, in this little tiny book. Isn't that, isn't that impressive? What page is that? What? What page is that? Um, th this is from the, I read you from the China study. That's page seven in the China study. Um, now, let me tell you something. We have a problem with obesity in the United States, as you know. In, in uh, 1976, about 15% were obese. 1988, 25% were obese. 1999, 30% were obese. Now we say half of Americans are overweight or obese. Now let me tell you something. It is no secret. I hate to confess my sins, but before preachers, you have to be honest. I'm not too smart on a computer. I'm not, I was raised without a computer. My wife bails me out. But she, you know, we've been in Bulgaria five times as a big communist country, and that co used to be communist. Communism educated people very well. You got people in the audience that are a lot of PhD level. They're intelligent. They ask intelligent questions. So I'm going over there again. My wife's in the shower, and I'm kind of hyper, and I want to get some information. And I stumbled on the computer. I don't know how, because they or I couldn't find it. I stumbled on with the World Health Organization. I'd gone over to Bulgaria, and, and in, in 19 different cities, they did all kinds of studies, and they came up with these facts. Now, when I get over to Bulgaria, the lab, uh, they put you on television, okay? And they had the same idea, you know, that they tried to make a fool out of you. They got a big muscular guy, he's a great lecture. He's talking to little old moms there, and he's trying to pin me down. I said, did you know over in Nissan City, the World Health Organization did a study, and they found in the whole country of Bulgaria that since World War II, and I had these things all memorized in my head, like a little bit, I had them all memorized. I said, you know, animal fats have increased 200%, fats in general have increased 250%, sugar increased 500%, and pork eating has increased 700%. Did you know that? He didn't know that. See, <laughs> did you know also that the highest cerebral vascular disease mortality in the world is in Bulgaria. Did you know that? He didn't know that either. <laughs> and also, rather high, I should use all memory, see, old little dumb ones, I just remember. Cardiovascular disease, uh, 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 both closely related to obesity, as the highest levels have been recorded in Bulgaria. Well, another lady on television, I was talking about that, and let me tell you the habits of Bulgarians. The first time I gave a lecture there, Got done at 9 o'clock and invited me out to eat. Well, I met with them the first time, I didn't go anymore. At 9 o'clock at night, they go out and they eat a whole meal. I mean, a big meal. And did you know that in the developed countries of the world, Bulgaria is number one for consumption of bread? Huh. They have beautiful bread. So they're at 9 and 10 o'clock at night eating as big, like pasta pieces of bread and eating a full meal. And they wonder why they got the hard, highest mortality rates of cardiovascular disease in the world. So I saw this gal who was interviewing and telling me, she said, oh, we Bulgarians like to go to bed with our tummy full. <laughs> also, the arteries were full of fat right. and um, mm -hmm. cholesterol. See? So anyway, I tell you that as a really a joke, because I'm, I'm, I'm underneath, I'm laughing, and I think some real geniuses. I just stumbled, I went back home, tried to find that website, I couldn't find it, but I had all that data, I had it all memorized, <laughs> two pages, and memorized it all, and I could give them those answers, but it's a fact. Countries of the world, including the United States, eat the most meat, have the most cancer. Mm -hmm. I was over in Africa. 
the dentist, you know, we just came back from Peru. You know how they, what they do in Peru? They take a little chair, a little plastic chair, and sit the patient down, <coughs> check that thing, get a little thing if they have to spit into that, and pull out those teeth. So I was talking to that dentist out in Africa. I said, you got any cancer over there? He said, Mom, practically none. The people are too poor to eat meat. Isn't that interesting? But somehow in America, we can't get through our heads. I'll tell you a little bit more about things going on in America. But anyway, let's go on with him. He says, additionally, impressive evidence now exists to show that advanced heart disease, relatively advanced cancers of a certain type of diabetes, and few other degenerative diseases can be reversed by diet. I, uh, I gotta just stop now, because I don't know where I'm going to this talk, because I'm not trying to keep going. I gotta stop and let me jump from Campbell, and I'll come back to Campbell, okay? And, and, and then uh, Tennyson. Let me show you this book by Esselstyn. Prevent and reverse heart disease. Now, I'm a doctor, and I'm telling you this. I've never seen him like this. He's got a picture back here of the guy's corner artery. They put dye on the groin, stick a thing up there, the heart, and stick dye in and take pictures of the arteries. And the arteries <laughs> narrowed because he's got atherosclerosis in it. November 27, 1996. July 22, 1999. This, this I'll get slides and put it up so you can see it. The arteries completely open and normal. Only on diet. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Isn't that exciting? That really gets me excited. So I'm going to tell you about that uh, in just a second. Okay, now, let's go back to Campbell. I'll come back to him in a minute. Let's go back to Campbell. Now, Campbell says this. He read a study over in India that they could turn cancer on like a light switch and off. How did they do that? They fed the animals animal protein, and they did, if they switch it from animal protein to a plant protein, they, they lose the cancer. Then they put the same rats back on, on uh, animal protein, and they grow cancer like that, like a light switch. So he did the experiments and found it to be true. They did the experiments in humans and found it to be true. Campbell's got all this data there. Like a light switch, now that's pretty impressive. You hear today they have these big cancer walks and cancer running. You know what the problem is? They just pay attention to what's going on. We know how to prevent a lot of cancers is by diet. But they don't want to do that, of course. So over and over again, he says, as Campbell says, that, uh, that it's nothing short of spectacular the, the, the effects over and over again that they've proven in humans the same thing. And you know, like for instance, world-class athletes like Dave Scott, track stars, Carl Lewis, Edwin Moses, the tennis great, Martina, and Nat Navratilova. Uh, and, uh, and, and you remember the uh, Ruth uh, Hydrant who used to I'll run, up, I'll run up down the stairs, she'd go to the college space and find the highest guy at the time and she'd run up down the stairs, she'd beat them all, you remember that? She'd beat the best athletes in college. They all found that a plant-based diet gave a significant edge in performance. Now here's what Campbell said, and, this, and then I'll switch over to back to Esselstyn. He said, in the laboratory, we fed experimental, experimental rats a diet similar to the usual American fare, rich in animal-based protein, and compared them with the rats fed a low diet and animal-based protein. Guess what happened when they asked them to uh, the, have the rest exercise? The ones that eat all the uh, animal-based protein, they're just lazy and they didn't even do nothing. And the ones that weren't fed that, they were always exercising. And they did all kinds of experiments. Did you know when they fed the rats, the, not only the animal-based protein, but you know what protein made cancer grow the best? Casein, you know what casein is? It's a protein found in cow's milk. So that's what I'll tell you in a minute. When I got cancer, I quit eating uh, the things in that cow's milk. So I'll just tell you that. But uh, I'll mention that just a minute. Okay, but anyway, uh, so Campbell's got, every, everybody ought to read that study. It's, it vindicates the spirit of prophecy 100%. That our diet is really safe, it's healthy. Now, you, you doctors quote studies called the Framingham study from Framingham, Massachusetts. I went to visit that. It's a little town outside of Boston. They got permanent buildings there. Since World War II, they do research. They started over 5,000 people in the town, I think, I don't know, third or fourth generation now. And that's where we get all our statistics about good cholesterol, and bad cholesterol, and heart attacks, and your risk. All that comes from Framingham study. I heard the fellow speak, his name is Costelli, speak about uh, uh, that. Uh, he was the head of the department for years. Now, Campbell quotes him in the book. Both he and Campbell promote plant-based diet. Now, let me tell you uh, another story that adds maybe a little bit. 
Caleb was just like all the rest of us should. You got to practice with preaching. He had all this research, all this stuff. And his wife come home in Carmen, and he's still eating some meat and stuff. And then his wife said, How come you don't practice what you preach? I said, What do you mean? She said, You're preaching all this stuff. You're still eating some of this stuff. And that's what changed him. You know that? Isn't that mm -hmm. So he changed now. He is a vegan vegetarian. And he promotes it. It's the healthiest diet there is for us. The vegetarian. I love the vegetarian diet. So, anyway, uh, I found that intriguing. Now, even more intriguing was this guy called Esselstyn. Esselstyn, his son wrote a book, I won't take time to tell you about it. He wrote one. He's a big fire, firefighter. It's called the Engine 2 Diet. He's a big firefighter. It's Esselstyn's son, big healthy guy. He, he won, the, I think, in the state wherever he was for swimming. He's a big athlete. But anyway, Esselstyn was a surgeon at the prestigious Cleveland Clinic. And I think he was a thyroid surgeon, I'm not sure, but I think that's right. And when he got done, he got interested in all this stuff, and so he's practicing out of his garage now. Let me tell you some interesting stories. Did, he went to the cardiologist and says, give me all your patients that have failed. I mean, they had bypass surgery, they had all the medicine, and all of that, and they failed, and you give them up, they're gonna die. So he gave them 24 names. So he calls them all in, these 24 patients, and he puts them on a very strict diet. He's going to put them on a diet that the goal to get their blood cholesterol over 150 and encourage them to eat grains, legumes, lentils, vegetables, and fruit. And he asked them to eliminate all oil, fish, fowl, and meat, and dairy. Uh, he's kind of against nuts, too. Now, let me just take a little side on it because you're going to hear all kinds of stuff. And there are some differences. Things. Loma has done a big study of nuts that if you eat nuts five times a week, particularly the Paul the Dog, PAW, pecans, almonds, and water. They decrease your risk of a heart attack 50%. So every morning I eat a handful of those. But anyway, Esselstyn is not for, for the nuts. But anyway, I just tell you, there's some differences. But anyway, you put them on the strict diet. Okay, now let's see what's going to happen. Well, early on, six patients quit his program. Okay? Now, he said, these guys were going to die. Carlin's give up. 20 years later, all of them are alive. Can you believe that? All 20 of them are alive. Now, as a doctor, whoo, that, that's pretty shocking. Now, he said, let's take a look at the six who dropped out. Now, the six who dropped out, they had experienced 49 cardiovascular events, including 15 cases of increased angina, or chest pain, 13 cases of measurable disease progression, seven cases of bypass surgery, four heart attacks, three strokes, two angioplasty procedures, two worsening stress tests. Now, about the, the other uh, 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 16 on the test, uh, Six from 24 years to what, 18. Here's what happened to them. At the beginning, they all averaged 246 milligrams of cholesterol. At the end, they averaged 137 milligrams of cholesterol. No heart attacks, no strokes, but they're all 20 alive. Now, does that not impress you as a doctor? And as a patient, it impresses me as a doctor. I tell you, yeah. if you can do that, the guys would be fun. So I tell you, this health message we got is phenomenal message. And you're in solid ground. And let me tell you what I did. I, I you can't keep your mouth shut when something's good. So I, I had a neurosurgeon work in my office. I gave him that book, The China Study. Two weeks he comes to me and says, Take a look at me, Mullins. Take a look at me. I'm looking at what am I supposed to see? He says, I'm a vegan vegetarian. He says, <laughs> He's a Catholic neurosurgeon. Okay. Now I gave that to my oncologist. I figured, well, I had cancer. I called five. So I called his office and I had cancer. I don't want to visit with the doctor. So he gave me a plan. I wanted to see him because I sent him a book. I sent him the oncologist, cancer specialist, a book. I haven't heard from him. So I didn't learn, so he didn't talk about me because I was, I was two years off from cancer then. That's four and a half years ago. Anyway, uh, anyway so he said, well, we, we talked about this. I said, what about that book? He said, Mullins, that's a great book. He said, well, when I got the cardiology part, I didn't read anymore because I'm not interested in cardiology. He said, I'll read more since you've been here. But he said, that, that book, he said, I was 85% there anyway. That book pushed me another 10%. Mm. So I had to kind of dumb. I said, you know what? I'm kind of a lay person. I said, I run around all over Europe, all this stuff there. I've been preaching out of this book. Am I in solid ground preaching? Oh, yes, he said, that's solid and pure. That's what my oncologist told me. I gave it to two pharmacists. One pharmacist says, in three months, we're going to be vegan vegetarian. He said, he is. The other farmer says, look back here, all this medicine, a bunch of poison, he says. <laughs> Good boy, he says. So I'm telling you, you don't have to be ashamed to talk to anybody in the medical profession 
You read the book. We are on solid ground with our health missions. It's solid. You, you can't tear it apart. And, and uh, we have to listen to it. Now, I'll tell you a little about Esselstyn theory. Esselstyn's theory is this. In the lining of your blood vessel, now you know, in order to have a heart attack or stroke, you got to plug up a blood vessel uh, with cholesterol or fat. But in the lining there, uh, they call it, have nitric acid. And what he uh, uh, says this is that you need to increase your nitric acid, and, and, and that's where the plaque and the fat form on that little lining uh, called the endothelium. That's what starts the build up the plaque that plugs up your blood vessel. So he says this: that you are, you ought to I know about the benefits of, uh, of nitric acid. And he says this, plant-based nutrition has a mighty beneficial effect on endothelial cells, those metabolic and biochemical dominoes that produce nitric acid. And nitri nitric acid is absolutely essential to vascular health, a finding that won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1998. So he's not, he's on truth, you know, this is the fact. So he said this, now nitric acid relaxes blood vessels, increases blood flow, prevents the white cells and platelets from becoming sticky, keeps smooth muscles from growing into plaques, and helps to diminish the vascular plaques. Now you ask the question, what does vegetarianism have to do with nitric acid? And he said this, the essential building block for nitric acid production is a substance called L-arginine, an amino acid that is rich in supply in a variety of plant foods Legumes, beans, soy, and nuts. The biochemistry of nitric acid explains what is perhaps the key mechanism through which patients can become heart attack proof. You don't have to have a heart attack. You know, we live in Asia, you know, we're going to die of a heart attack. Grandpa died of a heart attack. My dad died of a heart attack. I'm going to die of a heart attack. No, that's a bunch of blarkies. The plant based diet reduced or entirely eliminated all the cardiovascular risk. How do you think he took those 20 patients? that, I mean, those uh, 16 to 18 patients, 20 years later, still alive. Not one heart attack among them, changing the diet. Now, we're going on out of time, but let me just tell you a few things. I, I won't give you the details of this. Harvard Medical Council, I, I get their paper from them. They talked about an article, well, men eat more beans instead of meat. Harvard, now this is why. It said beans are stable, uh, uh, and they're uh, inexpensive, and they're stigmatized as a poor man's food, but yeah, but how healthy they are. And so I have a, I make up a slide on this. They, sh they show the comparison between a, a three ounce steak and uh, one cup of beans, five ounce steak and one cup of beans. And a five ounce steak is 300 calories, and one cup of beans is 265 calories.